Hey everybody, my name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars and welcome back to the channel. First of all, this pile of parts is all that remains of the Ravine Fine 59 hardtop. I kept it all because first of all it's a cool story and second of all this car is technically titled. I have a clean title in my name for this thing so I figured you know what let's keep it here why not. The video today though I want to talk about VIN tags, cowl tags and hidden VINs on X-Frame cars specifically. Now every car you know after like 1930 obviously has a hidden VIN and a VIN tag um, that's affixed to the car and before I start this, I should say, if the wind is horrible, you guys, I'm sorry. It's like 40 miles an hour out here. I'm going to do the best I can with what we've got. But like I said, I want to talk about the VIN tags and cowl tags and all that good stuff today um, in regards to titling a vehicle that may not have a VIN tag or wanting to verify if the frame is correct to the car. So with that being said, this first example here is a Tudor hardtop. Here's the public VIN in the... Uh, a side or you know driver side a pillar f59 j285056 so f would be a v8 impala 59 is a year j is janesville wisconsin so every model obviously has a vin that's specific to that make and, and model and year so i'm going to be explaining this thing today on a 59 chevy as well as a 62 chevy so the first thing we'll look at here is f59 and j those are the four things that will tell us all we need to know about this car. V8 Impala, 1959, Janesville, Wisconsin built. So we want to look at the cowl tag here. We see style 59-1837. That's a 1959 V8 Impala Tudor hardtop. The body, JA17438. JA means Janesville, Wisconsin. And this is the sequential body number, 17,438. This body number and the VIN number will not, they'll never match. You can kind of base the VIN number on how high or how low it is based on the body number. So this is a, a pretty high body number at, you know, 17,000. So a VIN number of 285,056, it, it makes sense with this car. So there's no doubt in my mind that this cowl tag and this VIN tag were born together on this car and it's a genuine two-door hardtop. Now things get a little tricky, however, when a car has no VIN, but it has a cowl tag. So as you guys see right there, it's kind of hard, but I'll put a picture on screen. Style 62-1637, body JA. So what that tells me, it's a 1962 V8 Bel Air two-door coupe built in Janesville, Wisconsin. The problem is the VIN tag has fallen off. Now pre-1968, I believe, all the VINs were spot welded on. And in 68 going forward, I think 68's the year, but in 68 going forward, they were, they were actually riveted on and not spot welded. So because this car came with a title, and the title said, you know, to 1637J, which is a correct title for that vehicle, we have to verify that the sequential VIN number on the title matches the sequential VIN number on the frame. So what I did was I cut it in the frame here, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's J249948. It's stamped very lightly right next to the cross member. So these seven digits match the last seven on the title so I know that that title is for this car and I can get a reproduction tag made for this vehicle. But if you ever want to question the title, you know, for instance here, 21637J would be a correct first set of numbers for a 62 Bel Air bubble top. Because obviously this number matches, I know that the title is good, but you have a 1962, it's a two-door two Bel Air bubble top and it's a V8 built in Janesville, Wisconsin. So because we see the J on the frame here and the JA on the cowl tag, I do know that this car was built in Janesville, Wisconsin. That matches the title, so that's a good thing. The next thing we would look at is the first digit on the title is a two, which indicates 1962, and the cowl tag shows us style-62. So it is a 1962 cowl tag. 
The final thing is 1637 in the VIN, which indicates the Bel Air bubble top. And on the cowl tag, it would actually say 1637. So like I said, you guys, this car has no VIN tag, but I am 100% confident that the title I got with this car is for this vehicle. So a reproduction tag is on eBay, $50. They make you prove ownership of the vehicle. So I will just take a picture of this, show them the title that's in my name and get a new tag, easy as pie. Here's also a frame that I've got. It's a 59 frame and I've cleaned off the pad where it would be. As you guys can see here, the, the pitting is so deep. You can only read about one number, but it looks like it's a one and a zero right here, but it's directly in line with the cross member. Now I'm not sure if every 59 is like this, but I do know that my hard top frame had a full VIN here. This one, it appears it only has the sequential numbers, but when I, when I actually cleaned up my Impala, my two-door Impala frame, I had you know, F59J and then the rest of it. So my full VIN was there, which obviously that is easy to confirm, but a lot of these cars only had the sequential in this area. So it can be from like right here to about right here. So if you guys are looking for a number on a frame for an X-frame specifically, cut the floor open, and take a grinder and just clean this up real nice and you should find the VIN. Just be sure to look really carefully. The final example I want to show you guys is that these tags are not perfect. They were done very hastily on the assembly line and there are mistakes. Take for instance this 1962 six cylinder Impala. The cowl tag actually reads style 62-1869 body is SL for St. Louis. However, if we look at the VIN tag here, 1869 means V8. We have 21769. The VIN tag indicates six cylinder. We do have an S for St. Louis and then the sequential VIN number. So like I was saying on the Bel Air bubble top, two indicates the year. 1769 indicates the style, and then S indicates the plant. Then you have the sequential VIN. So the fact is, we have a six cylinder VIN tag with an eight cylinder cowl tag. So obviously someone along the lines, when they were building this car, they wanted it to have a V8, and they stuck a six in it and gave it a six cylinder VIN. Now, I'm not worried that this has been swapped you can tell there's rust on the rivets there. I mean, this thing has never been off the car. And quite frankly, who's gonna, you know, if you're gonna swap a tag, who would swap a cowl tag but not a VIN tag? I mean, quite frankly, swapping a VIN tag is a felony. I do not encourage that, do not do that, nothing like that. But I know there are guys out there that are bad actors, and if you're gonna swap the tags, you would do it to both. And you probably wouldn't swap a four-door Impala tag. You'd probably do it to like an SS Chevelle, that started out as like a reproduction body or something like that. And unfortunately, the reason that people do that is the reason you have to be vigilant on this stuff. So that doesn't bother me. I would, I, I mean, I bought this car anyways. It doesn't affect me whatsoever. The VIN tag had a title, it has a good title. Um, that's the main thing on these cars. But if you ever wanted to verify this VIN number or see what this car was truly destined to be, you cut a hole right here in the, in the floor fold the floor over, clean it up with a grinder, and then get that, that sequential VIN off of the frame, just to verify that that frame goes to this VIN, which I know it has, it's been off the road forever. No one was doing that stuff. These rivets, or I'm sorry, these, these spot welds look beautiful, never been tampered with. I'm not worried about it whatsoever, but it is something you guys need to be vigilant of. So everybody, that's been the end of today's video. If you have any questions regarding your specific VIN, either leave a comment down below or just do a quick Google search on your make, year, and style of the car. There's tons of VIN decoders out there in a lot of the old forums, so I'm sure someone can help you with that. But this has just kind of covered you know, four different instances with VINs, titles, no VIN, anything you guys can actually encounter in the real world i should say regarding a vin or a title issue so keep that in mind um if you guys are looking for a vin on your frame i hope this video helped you if it did leave a like rating leave a comment if it did help you guys and make sure to subscribe for more videos thank you all for watching my name is ryan and i'll catch you next time